Daggerfall Covenant is a compact between the peoples of the Northwoods, Tamriel, the Bretons, Red Guards, and Orcs. That forms an alliance of mutual defense with a vision of establishing peace and order across Tamriel. Indeed, the kings of the Covenant take the remain, I'm sorry, the Romans as their model, claiming to be the spiritual heirs of the Second Empire. The Daggerfall Covenant was born in the Second Era 542, when the kings of High Rock allied to repulse an invasion by a horde of Reachmen under the command of Korak, the Black Drake. Howling out of the eastern mountains, the Reach barbarians raised Evermore, besieged Wayrest, sacked Camlorn, and marched as far as the gates of Daggerfall before the Bretons finally stopped them. In the wake of Dekorak's defeat, the kings of Daggerfall, Wayrest, Camlorn, Evermore, and Shornhelm swore the so-called First Daggerfall Covenant, a solemn oath to defend each other's kingdoms and stand as one against all foreign foes. High Rock proposed as the Bretons rebuilt, I'm sorry, High Rock prospered as the Bretons rebuilt, especially after the Second Era 561, when miners near Wayrest made the biggest Orichalum strike in recorded history. Emeric, Earl of the Domain of Cumberland, the site of the mines, proposed to use the resulting wealth to enhance Wayrest's fleet and improve trade throughout High Rock. King Gardner of Wayrest granted his approval, but before the fleet was completed, the dreaded Nahatan flu, I think that's how you pronounce it, swept through Wayrest and killed the entire Gardner royal household. Earl Emmerich was elevated to the throne and House Cumberland became the second royal dynasty of Wayrest. The new King Emmerich of Wayrest had been courting the daughter of King Ranser of Shornhelm, but in the second era of 566 he married Princess Maria of the Sentinel. This nearly brought down the first covenant when Ranser, who felt the trade, launched a surprise attack on Wayrest. The kings of Camlorn, Evermore, and Daggerfall all sided with Wayrest, and Emmerich's superior diplomacy brought the armies of Sentinel into the fray to protect Emmerich's queen. Furthermore, Emmerich reached out to a great clan of orcs in Rothgar and offered them Arsinium in return for aid. Shornhelm was defeated, and the covenant was reborn, not as a mere Breton defense pact, but as a new multinational alliance. The conclave that negotiated the alliance lasted for months, with argument and debate at every turn. The final result was the King of Emmerich's vision made manifest in dozens of compromises and carefully negotiated provisions. Freedom of trade was guaranteed throughout the region, and over the objections of the nobles of Ribbonspire and the Crown Redguards of Alakir, the orcs are accepted as full members of the Alliance. Eventually, all the city-states of the Northwest Tamriel swore fealty to the Covenant's Royal Council, presided over by High King Emery. As the architect of the Alliance, he claimed supreme leadership. So this is the modern Daggerfall Covenant, an alliance of the Red Guards of Northern Hammerfell under King Faharajad, the Orcs of the Mountains Northeast under King Kurag of the Orsinium, with the Breton King Emmerich of High Rock presiding from his palace in Wayrest. At its best, it is a noble alliance of honorable and chivalrous peoples representing all the best aspects of the First and Second Empires. And from this solid foundation, perhaps a third, even mightier empire shall arise, providing all the peoples of Tamriel the benefits of the mutual respect, vigorous trade, and reference for the divines.